Hi there, welcome to Number One Geek. It's I, Saz, and we're back with another Saz's Restro Workshop. As you can see by the warning, you're going to see some horrible, horrible things today. But the only reason I'm showing it is because I make the mistake so that you don't have to. So let's uh, get down to business. Uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to change the chips. Uh, I've got Amiga 3.0 in my machine, but I wanted Amiga 3.1, so I bought the Amiga Forever Claranto discs from uh, Amiga Store, based in Spain. Now, the first thing you need to do is get the old chips out. Now, I bought a nice little cheap uh, thing, but 25 years of being stuck in something takes a lot of things out. I was getting very worried. And you can see I'm going to be bending this board left, right and centre, which got me some sort of things. Don't worry, that was just a cut. That wasn't me just fun, pun, <laughs> pulling away. But I was desperately trying to get the chips out and they weren't coming. So uh, you'll see shortly that I decide... Well, let's try the other chip first. Don't worry, everything's okay in the end. I didn't damage the board, didn't damage anything there, but... And as you remember, my hand's moving away to touch another piece of metal just to uh, ensure that I've uh, grounded myself each time I do this. Now this one came out a lot easier. As you'll see, I'm putting a lot of stress on my... Uh, I didn't try to pull it out, but it comes out. So this time I use a metal pin. So yes, it, for those who... Uh, I'm just using a, like a dental pick to get it out, which I use for a lot of different things. But I've just unseated the one side and hopefully that allows me to get underneath and pull the uh, thing off. I'm trying to hold the board flat as possible. Here's the stress I'm having but finally get the boards out. Now here's a problem as you can see I damaged the new chips coming in the 3.1 chips I was replacing Generally because I wasn't very good at what I was doing and didn't really prep myself properly or learn. So hopefully you'll learn from this one. So it was back to Amiga store to get myself some new chips. And this time I decided I would go for the 3.1.4 chips. Having done a little bit more reading, I found that maybe I, I probably wanted those 3.14 chips anyway. So very expensive mistake, but a mistake all the same. So what I did then was buy myself uh, an IC straightener from Amazon, just about a couple of pounds, and uh, use that to straighten the pins. Because most pins, believe it or not, actually don't come out pre-straightened. So I had a bit of an issue, and that ended up becoming uh, a damage part where I was trying to manually put them in, and I made a mistake. So doing it properly now, or learning to do it properly, we're going to go to the board. And take out the original chips, which I put back in after I broke the other uh, board. It still worked. It's all great. Don't worry. Amazingly. And what I wanted to do is just check to make sure that the pins were the same angle. Because obviously, it's once bitten, twice shy. Now the important part here is that you want to make sure that the far left pin is left free. There's less uh, pins than there are holes. And you also want to make sure that the notch is set to the left as well. The other thing you want to make sure as well is that the uh, high and low chips, the low is actually at the bottom rather than at the top. So I'm putting the high in first. Just make sure that before you put your insoles, you understand which chips go where, which direction, and to which pin. So always have a look at your original board first. Maybe take a photo so that you've got some sort of reference to how the chips are entered in. So next chip is coming out. again we'll seat it in making sure that the far left pin is not entered and that it is pointing the correct direction and once again I'm being very very careful to make sure all the pins are in straight so I don't bend the pins trying to force them in just being as careful as I possibly can as I say I was bitten by the first mistake so 
now I'm making sure that all the pins are correct before pushing it in a bit more firmly. So that's the, that's the board done. So we're just going to put the keyboard back on and loosely put the top on and we're going to give it a quick test and see what happens with the 3.1 chips. So what I've done here is I've done both the video and the computer just to see what's going on. Now you'll find something quite interesting, it takes a bit of a time to go and now I, got, I must admit I was starting to panic because not a lot was happening, I thought maybe I put the chips in wrong or something or other but the, um, the light was on still so everything was okay so I thought I'd just let it go and see what happens, maybe it's something new happening or it's the first time that it's getting used to the chips or something but still, yes, this is a very long time. But then the hard drive and the floppy drive sort of like suddenly kick in, which means that it's searching for stuff. And there we go, the 3.1.4 Kickstart version. And of course, we need not finish there. AmigaKit.com, I've managed to get a compact flash card, which has a nice kit that can put together, but in a nice box as well. Uh, that's got some extra preloaded software on there, but I'm gonna go for the retro ready solution, which is a hard solution, which really prevents any real issue from shorting out from when you're using a, uh, a lead. So opening up the Amigo again. And um, once again, learning from the mistakes that I made with that ROM chip, we're going to be very, very careful about installing this thing. The IDE ports on there are open and can easily be bent out of shape or broken so I really did not want that to happen because that's going to be a costly costly error having to get it sent off to be repaired so this is going to take me a little bit of time just to make sure it's seated correctly and then gently pressure it down until it starts to actually yeah, fit Now, the 3.1.4 uh, ROMs allow for more um, expansion. Uh, currently, the chip that we've got is a four gigabyte chip, which is what used to be the limit uh, for it. But with 3.1.4, that limit has actually now been broken. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at different cards at a later date, as well as WHD load. But for the moment, we want to make sure that everything's working fine. So what we're just gonna do is just gonna take the uh, pre-loaded card, which has an installer to allow you to put 3.0 or 3.1 into the thing, or OS 3.9, I believe. Just taking it out of that cradle, which could potentially cause issues, and put it into the more sturdier cradle, which is sitting nicely on the PCI CMCI CI 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 slot, as I like to call it. It's a really hard thing to say, that is. Anywho, uh, next thing up is a bit of speed. Uh, I also, from Amiga Kit, I bought a card that has not only extra eight megabytes of memory, fast memory, I believe it is. Um, and I also bought a clock, which kind of, it, it helps me with a little thing I had as a kid where I just really hated having to set the clock all the time. And just to have that clock in there, even despite all the problems, still is going in there. It also has another chip in there as well to help speed up and help with some of the processing in there. So, lid back on and we're ready to test the system. That's uh, something that's very exciting and probably where we're going to end at this point, we're going to have a look at expanding a little bit further next episode. But, all that needs to remain is a switch on. Now if you notice, the hard drive kicked in a lot quicker. And you may also see a little flash of green at the left hand side, where the, uh, the hard drive has been working. But there you go, there's the Amiga Kit uploader. I won't go too far into that because I don't really use it that much. And next episode, we will be looking at installing the Workbench 3.1.4 and WHD load. So all that reminds me to say, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you like, press the like button. If you dislike what you dislike, press the dislike button. But please pop something down in the comment section to let me know how I can improve my content for you. If you like what you see, why not press that subscribe button. And if you super do like it, press that bell icon. See you later.